Hello everyone, uh, this is CJ Reddy from Altair. Um, here we are in uh, Philadelphia for International Microwave Symposium of 2018 with the theme of uh, microwaves, medicine and mobility. So here we talk about the efficient antenna design for the wireless, wearable and um, uh, implantable devices using our software Pico. So introduction to computational electromagnetics, you start with the realistic objects you discretize them and you solve the Maxwell's equations and then you get the electric and magnetic fields and then you can find the quantities you need for uh, antennas, for example, the input return loss, radiation patterns um, and other quantities. So to do these things, there are various solutions that are available and some of the solutions we are focusing on today for wearables and implantables are the finite element method, finite difference time domain, metro moments and MLFMM. These we refer to as full wave solutions. And then we have asymptotic solutions if you go beyond the full wave solution limitations. Then of course, the Altair also has propagation software that can be used beyond the device um, calculation. So in the wearables and implantables, you have devices and then you have the human bodies. And then how do you model the devices is uh, using different methodologies we have, meta moments, for example, with surface equivalence principle, and finite element method and finite difference time domain method. Whereas for the human bodies, if they're homogeneous phantoms like this one, you use metra moments or the MLFMM with surface equivalence principle. With inhomogeneous bodies, you use FEM and FTTD. So if you use surface equivalence principle, it's going to be surface mesh. FEM, it's going to be volumetric mesh. And FTTD, it's going to be voxel mesh. So in wearables, you have smart watches, and in this case, we model the smartwatch with a antenna, with a chip antenna here with FEM, and then you do the simulations with Pico, and then you do the measurements, and you can see an excellent agreement between them. Now you take that antenna, put that into the uh, casing and the strap, and calculate parameters and radiation pattern, and then you use the those patterns onto the human body to see the effect of human body on the uh, radiation patterns. Coming to fitness trackers, because one can design the Bluetooth antenna, but designing the Bluetooth antenna by itself um, and matching it with an optimization, optimized matching circuit will not do it because once you put the strap and the casing, it's going to detune. And then once you have the hand, put your tracker on the hand, it's going to detune further. So you have to design the antenna taking into effect the strap and the casing and the uh, hand into effect. Um, so the radiation pattern there and also the uh, fields can be calculated as well. Uh, so the other thing that, that is being designed in the wearables is the rear field uh, coupling analysis. And in this case, we can see that once you put that in there uh, into the uh, tracker with the casing and the strap, you can see the field coming down. So that you have to take into account as well. In terms of implantable, pacemakers are becoming very popular. When you put the pacemaker inside the human body, you have to take not only into account what is the radiation pattern that's coming out of it. In this case, you can see if you use a design of the dipole, the design one, and this is the radiation pattern you get. And with the FIFA, which is planar inverted F antenna, you get a better gain. So that's something you need to take into account. But also the other thing you need to be concerned about is the SAR value. That is how much the, the radiation affects the human body with respect to the 1 gram cube standard, IEEE standard, and also 10 gram uh, ECNIP standard there. Uh, and also similar to injectables, uh, these are the injectable implantables that can go into the human body for the sake of sensing at ISM band. Of course, you can calculate the injectables by themselves and their characteristics, but also in a phantom where you have the skin, the fat, and the muscle, and then of course fat in the muscle there, and it's radiation pattern. You can see that the gain comes down because of this. Uh, we get minus 16 dB. Of course, minus 17 dB is the desired gain for the uh, And then there's another type of implantable, that is the hip replacement inside uh, the body, which can generate heat when it is subjected to MRI uh, examination. So in this case, we can see that this is the field distribution. Uh, in a phantom that is of uh, ASTM standard 2009. And uh, you can see the SAR distribution, and also you can see the temperature distribution. With respect to temperature, the, um, with respect to time, the temperature increases with 40 watt of the MRI power and 20 watts of the MRI power here. 
So in conclusion, we can say that using the simulation tool we have, Pico, you can very effectively design antennas for the implantable devices um, and also wearables. And not only that, you can take into account the um, radiation patterns and communication characteristics, but also the safety standards as well. And of course, more details, one can visit altairhyperworks.com slash Pico, and you can uh, learn more about it. Thank you very much for your attention.